Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to another edition of MLFA Promises Success Stories. Today's journey begins with Irfan Khan, a naturalized U.S. citizen from Pakistan. He has a wife and two children, and he's worked hard to realize the American dream after arriving in this country back in 1994. He's held jobs in South Florida as a taxi driver, service technician. Uh, he operated a limousine company, and he's a very avid cricket player. In 2011, he stepped up into a computer industry job that promised a very good living. But a short time later, Irfan Khan was indicted, along with his father and his brother. Both his father and brother were imams at, the, at South Florida Masjids. So in the Miami, Florida area, all three of them were charged with conspiring to provide up to $50,000 to the Pakistani Taliban terror group. Irfan Khan was arrested, put in jail, and he spent 319 days in solitary confinement before federal prosecutors abruptly dropped all of the charges in June of 2012. Irfan Khan was released from prison, free to go home to his family. Later, a federal judge ordered the acquittal and release of Irfan Khan's brother. For lack of evidence, he too was free to go home to his family. The government did continue to press charges against Irfan's 80-year-old uh, father, Hafiz Khan, uh, who did have to stand trial, but Hafiz Khan uh, recently passed away. So, inna lalahi wa inna lalahi rajiun. Uh, imagine, the government accused you of a crime, put you in solitary confinement for 319 days. Solitary confinement, for those of you who don't know, means 23 hours a day. You're confined to your cell in prison with nobody else. You eat, sleep, and do everything in a tiny cell measuring about 80 square feet. It's smaller than a horse stable. The cells contain a bed, a sink, and a toilet. Meals are delivered through the slot in the door. There's an overhead light that's kept on in the cell at all times. You're released for one hour every day to exercise in a larger cage or a walk-in area. Sometimes you have to wear the shackles and restraints even during exercise. And for 319 days, then just before trial, a judge reviews the government's evidence against you and decides there's not enough evidence to bring you to trial, and he orders your release. What would you do? How would you feel? Well, Irfan Khan decided to sue the U.S. government for malicious prosecution accusing the government of essentially manufacturing a non-existent case against him. He is being represented by MLFA, also a major law firm that we partner with in Florida called Morgan and Morgan PA, and also Care Florida. All three of us are helping Irfan Khan with his malicious prosecution lawsuit. Now, Irfan Khan was arrested and imprisoned for 319 days and made to endure what he describes as some of the worst conditions imaginable. It was solitary confinement in federal prison. Then the government dropped all the charges right before trial. He is seeking millions of dollars in damages, and a Miami federal judge refused the Justice Department's attempt to get the case dismissed, and it is headed for trial. There have been countless complaints. The MLFA is aware of hundreds of complaints about the government's overreach and collateral damage in the war on terrorism since September 11, 2001. Yet it is extremely rare for the Justice Department to lose any criminal case, and especially in the national security realm, and even more rare for an individual to successfully sue the government for a flawed prosecution. But Irfan Khan, 
41 years old, has a chance to accomplish both of these. For, for now, Irfan is back to driving his taxi. And it's been impossible for him to get, you know, a better paying job because of the notoriety of the original charges is everywhere. Uh, it'll pop up every time a prospective employer searches his name on the internet. Uh, he's had trouble opening bank accounts, uh, leasing a car, getting a mortgage. Uh, his children are haunted by his father's arrest. They fear the police. Uh, friends, even family shun him because they want him to delete their name and numbers from the phone uh, because they're afraid of being targeted by surveillance. Everywhere he looks right now, Irfan Khan says it's a dead end. He was unfairly targeted. He doesn't want this to happen to anybody ever again. He only wants justice. But you might be thinking, what caused this to happen? Why are we here? Why did the government indict Irfan, his brother, and their father in the first place? What, what got this started? Well, it turns out Irfan's father, Hafiz Khan, opened a charitable school in Pakistan to teach young children how to read the Quran. And Imam Hafiz was funding the entire school out of his own income. He wasn't asking others for donations. He was saving every penny from his small salary as an imam and sending that money overseas to help the children. And when he would do this, Imam uh, Hafiz Khan made thousands of phone calls in Pashto and Urdu to Pakistan, and he would call his sons and he would talk to them about sending money to his talibs, to his students, and or give this money to my Taliban. And he sometimes referred to and instructed his sons to give money to his Sharia people in Pakistan. And he talked about politics and he had a lot of conversations. But all of these calls were misinterpreted by the government to be nefarious or somehow linked to terrorist activity. And here we are, an overzealous, unjustified reaction by the government to indict first and learn the facts later. Ha, Irfan Khan was arrested and imprisoned for 319 days, made to endure these unbearable solitary confinement conditions, only to have all the charges dropped before a judge. The legal battle for Khan will be a long, it'll be a long one. And it continues until today because it's not over. It may take years to win or to lose or to get some resolution. But no matter the outcome, MLFA looks forward to pursuing justice on behalf of Mr. Khan, standing up for the rights of one to protect the rights of many. Again, MLFA is in the front lines of justice, protecting our rights and our liberties when and where it matters most. Promises made, promises kept. Thank you for watching. Salaam alaikum.